shot. This is the easiest I've ever to answer. Let me say beer. I can't even begin to describe. I'm actually going to go crazy. I'm going to buy everybody around on this one. Welcome back, everybody, to Big Apple Hockey's Bar Talk. We're engaging our confidence on these NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you so confident that you're buying everybody around? So, so, I'll have a beer or, oh, God, I'll take a shot. And, of course, play along down in the comments below. And I didn't hock it earlier, but make sure you get one of your Big Apple Hockey trucker hats or T-shirts. Phil, we're going to start with the New York Rangers. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? A clean A block for me. I know. I was going to text that to the guys just now. Um, it, it's good that I double-checked everything and triple-checked. Um, Phil, we're going to start with the New York Rangers. Mika Zibanejad, 22 goals, 36 assists this season. He's on his lowest pace since his second year with the New York Rangers. The Rangers need Mika Zibanejad to reach 30 goals. I mean, I would say beer just because I, I don't think it really matters. I mean, really what matters is playoffs. But you want him playing well entering the playoffs. So him reaching 30 goals would help in that regard. I just don't see it happening because he needs eight goals in another, I think they have, what, 13 games left? I, 13 I games, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see that happening. I just don't. I think it's too much. Um, I, I think this is the most important part here is that his five-on-five five play gets better because it just – has not been good overall. I don't know what the issue is with him. I don't know if it's the fact that he had a kid this year. I, I I don't I don't know what the issue is, whether he's hurt, but he needs to be far better at five on five. Yes, helping, uh, you know, scoring a bunch of goals going into the playoffs would help, but the most important thing is five on five play because if he continues to play like this, the team's going nowhere. You know, Anthony, I was going to go to you first, but I'm going to buy around on this. I think he has to play better. And I think sometimes, mentally speaking, you get to a number. And I know I skipped, I, I skipped this one by Anthony in the A block. Alexei Lafreniere got his 20th goal of the season. So he didn't have to snicker about that. Alexa, stop listening. So I think that he does need to get rolling, get goal scoring. But yes, five on five play, which has been better, needs to get even better than that. Anthony, what do you think? I mean, you use the word need here. So, uh, I mean... I'm going to go shot. I mean, I'm surprised he went round. I mean, what what, what happens if he doesn't? Rangers are making the playoffs. They're going to win. He's, they're, a, they're he's a notorious players. slow starter in the in, what, in, the, in what the playoffs. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is even if he doesn't, they're still going to make the playoffs. Very well still win, may win the division. So whether or not he scores 30 goals, it really has very little impact on – the rain. I mean, yeah, sure. It, it would be the aspect of then you could say he's hot going into the playoffs, and that would help. But I mean, I, honestly, I don't think it matters if he scores thirty or not. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, let's go to another guy that is for a New York team that is underperforming right now. Pierre Engvall was a healthy scratch last night after signing that big extension last year. Anthony Pierre Engvall will not live up to his contract. I mean, layup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, this, this is a this is a round. Um, I mean, look, Pierre Engvall is not a bad player. I mean, he's he's a good depth piece. He, you know, he has he has speed. Um, he has some, you know, he has a little bit of a scoring touch. But there was no need to give a guy like him a seven year contract. There's there's zero. Like I, I understand the the whole you know thing of you know more term brings the AAV down. Uh, I, I get that, but um, no, no need to give him seven years. Uh, I don't. It's fine. I don't. I'm not even mad that Luke kept him. I mean, he was good down the stretch last year, but I mean, how about like three years, maybe four years. Like, there was just no need to go. There was no need to go seven years on Engvall. And again, if it was a matter of keeping the AAV down, you know, if if he didn't like a four year deal and wanted more money, then okay, well too bad move on. They could have found somebody else like him. So um, I thought that was a poor decision by, by Lou with the seven years. And uh, so, no, I don't think he's going to live that contract. <laughs> Phil, what do you think? 
What do you think I'm thinking? I think you're thinking hit the button. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's it's literally the Goodrow version or the Islanders version of the Goodrow contract. I don't, I don't know why they did that. And they did it with Mayfield too, which I don't understand. Like for years, the problem with this team was that they kept giving out big contracts to depth players. They get beaten by Carolina pretty handily. And then what do they do? They go give out two more big contracts to two depth players. Yeah. When will they learn? It's it's not even they. Like, it, it's when will Lou learn? Like, I, I don't understand what he's thinking. I, I, and I get wanting to bring those guys back. But, like, you have to be able to draft those types of guys. Those types of guys are easy to draft. They're, like you can get them in almost any round. I mean, the the Rangers got Edstrom and Rempe out of late round picks. Late round picks. That's what you should be doing. And the Rangers are finally starting to correct that mistake of signing guys like Goudreau as opposed to drafting them. Yeah. So you know, Berard, you know, that, that's another one that's going to come up. They just signed Yaroslav uh, Malash to a a deal a three-year deal, an entry-level deal. And, I mean, even though he's not a big-time scorer at Providence, he's viewed as a potential, you know, bottom six piece. The Islanders need to start doing that and getting those guys in. And they have guys that can come up. I mean, like, I mean, McLean has actually been decent for them. I mean, he's not a great player, but he's actually played well. Hudson Fashing, they got him out of nowhere and then he ended up playing well for them. So it's – I don't understand why they're not giving these guys the chance instead of going out and giving seven-year deals to guys like Mayfield and Engvall. What are you doing there? Just terrible. Well, I'm, I'm going to make this a hat trick, and part of it has to do, guys, with – he's just miscast. He's not a second-line guy. Don't make him a second line guy. Make him a first. Make make him a third line guy, not a first line guy. I mean, I almost went the other direction, but that's what they should be doing. He should be a bottom six forward. And then you know what? Then maybe you're looking at a guy that's worth that contract. But even at six years, we all of us bristled at that. We we praised the Sorokin contract and went ooh when they announced the other ones. Oof. Yeah, but also let's look at the Eastern Conference wild card standings. You got Tampa Bay with eighty points. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. 